the glove of wrestler. One run comes in. Here comes Bodenhausen, and that'll do it. A mission accomplished. The first three-peat in big league history belongs to St. Joe. We came into the summer knowing that we had the potential to do it again in our first three-peat. Feels amazing, especially with all the fans here in a crowd of what felt like the whole stadium was packed. It's amazing. I mean, we don't toot our horn enough about how cool uh, St. Joe is, and so this is just a small glimpse into a St. Joe, the potential of it, what it could be. And St. Joseph's been known to be a baseball town for a long time. And with the way this team continues to play, perhaps this Mustangs dynasty is just beginning. I think we're gonna go for four. And so eight-time champion sounds nice uh, until you hear nine. The season winding down and welcome into another edition of the St. Joseph Mustang Show exclusively right here on KQ2. I'm Chris Roush, the show sponsored by Getz Credit Union Ventura Foods, and we got a lot to get to on this show, including a conversation with manager Johnny Coy and assistant coach Truman Merrick, as well as a couple other stories to get to you as well. First, though, we start with some of the more bigger news of the year, probably actually since the Mustangs started way back in 2009. We've seen huge crowds at Phil Wall Stadium on Friday, Saturday nights, all throughout the Mustangs' tenure here in St. Joseph. But this past Saturday, we saw a record-shattering crowd fill up Phil Walt Stadium. Wow. Reaction was just thank you. As soon as that night was over, really, I mean, the, the energy that we felt, I was ready to do it again. Mustangs owner Kai Turner always says the team is trying to raise the bar, and they've done just that with their record-breaking attendance of 6,013 fans on hand for last Saturday's game. For us, that's the goal to hopefully continue to build here at St. Joe. And uh, we want that to be every Saturday here. Uh, we knew it was possible. Uh, you know, I know from the get-go, the, the, you know, in 2009 to where we are today, uh, to be able to experience something like that. You know, we felt the electricity throughout the week. There was a Mustangs game coming up. With more than 6,000 fans coming through the gates of Phil Walsh Stadium, it gave these players an unbelievable experience. So they want to say thank you. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Oscar Pegg. Uh, I want to say thank you to all the fans. You guys make it really easy to play in St. Joe, and you make it the best environment in the world. Thank you, guys. Hey, it's Dakota Spicer here. Uh, I just wanted to thank you guys for coming out for Taylor Swift night uh, last week here at Phil Welch. Uh, it means a lot to us, and uh, it was awesome to see you guys here and break the attendance record. So thank you, guys. Hey, Mustangs fans. It's Trevor McCollum here, and I wanted to say thank you for everyone who came out last Saturday. The fans mean the world to us here in St. Joe, and we hope to see you again soon. Hey, it's Will Dryberg here. Just want to say thank you to all the fans last Saturday. 6,000 plus to see a Mustangs win on Taylor Swift night. Just had an electric atmosphere, fireworks at the end, being a St. Joe local, seeing 6,000 plus here at Phillips Stadium meant the world to us. Thank you very much. What's up, Mustangs fans? This is Mason Holton. Just wanted to come on and say, how much we really appreciate you guys coming out for the Taylor Swift night, and congratulations to the winner. A lot of guys talk about wanting to be a Mustang because of the fans and just how much support they give them. And it's arguably some of the biggest crowds they've ever played in front of, which is special to these guys, also special to the fans, and of course, the entire organization. Whether you like baseball, whether you like the bounce house, whether you like horses, you know, whatever, we do fun games in between. There's something for everybody every single night, and that's why people keep coming back because it's just so much fun. It's a perfect relationship St. Joe has with the fans, and, you know, everything is just work just fits so well. St. Joe's a special spot. Uh, our guys are going to go back to their uh, colleges and, and tell their coaches, tell their players, tell their families, you got to be in St. Joe. Our staff's going to do the same thing. There's really nothing like St. Joe in this community. Uh, and we're excited, you know, to be able to represent St. Joseph, Missouri.
Welcome back into the St. Joe Mustangs show right here on KQ2. Joining me now, the manager of the St. Joe Mustangs, Johnny Coy. Johnny, we're down to the final few games this weekend before the postseason. Coming off a pretty incredible comeback this past Thursday night against Shula Coffee on the road down 6 0, making that comeback with a 9 8 win. That's kind of the MO of this team, isn't it, too, where they get down, they're not really out, though, either. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, all throughout the season, we've been we've been down early in games, and we're able to come back, and you know, our guys just continue to keep having fun, whether we're up or down, and you know, that stays the guys stay loose and relaxed, and you know, make it really fun, uh, and that, that gives the guys, you know, all the confidence in the world to come back, and they just keep doing it. and It's a lot of fun to watch. There's always kind of that learning curve, right? The first couple of weeks, the guys are getting used to each other, they're getting used to the league and everything, but. That mid June through early July, this group was firing just night in and night out. Where where were you seeing the most growth from this team this year? Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of different things. I mean, there's a, a lot of the guys that are new here were really nervous playing in front of all these fans, and it, it is a big adjustment playing in front of so many fans. And you know, guys kind of you know try to do too much at the plate. You know, that's been our thing for forever, ever since the Mustangs first started. Is guys play in front of so many fans, they want to do too much, and you know. Uh, just, just not, just not trying to do too much at the plate and staying inside yourself and not trying to, you know, hit balls out every swing. And you know, the guys have made a pretty good adjustment with that, and uh, I can really see it paying off in games. Fans probably don't realize that aspect of it, right? That there's four or five thousand people here. The pressure that these guys feel at the plate. Take me through what that pressure does feel like, because I mean, you felt it many times before too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you got a guy in scoring position. You know, less than two outs. You want to do good for the fans so they get a big uproar and make the fans go crazy. That's what the guys love to do. That's what everybody loves to do. You want to do something good for a lot of people to get a big response. And, you know, sometimes that can make you do a little bit, try to do a little bit too much and swing too hard. And, you know, when you do that, everybody knows in baseball, if you try to do too much at the plate, you're going to end up getting yourself out. And uh, guys were doing that, you know, earlier in the year. And uh, whenever they do not try to do too much and the fans are getting excited that's all that's a lot of fun man and the guys want they, get, they want to do good for the fans they want to do good for their teammates and you know uh it, it can be it can be a struggle for a, a lot of young guys that have never done this before in front of the, in front of this many fans and uh you know i love being around these guys they're a lot of fun and uh, as long as they continue to keep doing what they've been doing the last couple weeks i think we're gonna be just fine a lot of experience on this team. That was the big thing we talked about before the season, too. It's just how many guys were coming back. How much growth was between maybe a year one to year two guy, year two to year three guy from where they maybe were the year prior? Uh, you know, just being comfortable playing in front of this many fans. I mean, it, it's crazy. Uh, you don't realize how many fans are here until you're actually out on the field at the plate you know, all by yourself out there hitting in front of all these people. And, you know, you can see the the, the – other teams, you know, struggle with it as well. The guys on the mound, you know, it can be a struggle, you know, trying to perform well in front of this many fans. And the guys have done it for several years now, and they're getting more and more comfortable with it as the season goes on. And most of the guys talk about it to the to the to the guys that are brand new. That man, they don't even notice it anymore. You know, they just out there playing as hard as they can, and you know, whatever happens, happens. And you know, that's what's been going on uh, the last couple of weeks, and it's been a lot of fun, man. What has the season meant to you so far? I mean, obviously it's been a big for your family too and just everything kind of encompassing because Kai was talking about just this year's felt different, like on a bigger scale as a whole, but I know you've had a lot going on too. Yeah, I mean, it's been a, a really tough summer for my family. You know, we had twins born early, um, you know, June 17th. And I've been able, I've been having to miss some road games, been having to miss a lot of pregame stuff on home games. And, you know, going back and forth from Kansas City, back and forth has made this summer really tough on me mentally, physically, and my wife, and my son Cam, and uh, you know, all the, all the rest of my family as well, you know, having to watch Cam when we go down there every day, and uh, you know, it's been a struggle, but these guys keep keep having, you know, fun, and making me have fun with it, you know, all the struggles going on off the field, and you know, are just making me enjoy it, and uh, you know, this season has felt different uh, for that aspect alone for me, but you know, it's been a lot of fun having so many guys that have been back for, for so many years and you know it, it it makes a nice transition to the brand new guys that aren't used to this you know type of season and playing every day is tough and you know these guys are doing a really good job and you know the, the guys that have been have been here before have really taken a, a leadership role to the new guys and uh, you know they get along so well and they gel so well it's like they're just a bunch of brothers in the locker room I don't want to age you too much here but this question may do that a little bit the amount of guys that have said they looked up to you when they were little playing out here, now, they're, now you're coaching them. And every time I talk to them about why they come back, and it, you're one of the first reasons why. To know that you're making that big of an impact on so many of these guys, 
not just on the field, but just day-to-day life where you let them be themselves. They can come to you if they have problems. Just to know that you're making that impact, do you, I guess, do you realize the magnitude of that impact that you're making? You know, not, you know, I, I get reminded every once in a while, you know, like the other day, Kolsabowski said that he came to a game in 2010 and he was, I don't know, seven, eight years old. And I just remember he hit me, hit me hitting a home run over both walls into that rec center parking lot. And just now I get, now he gets to play for me. And, you know, I mean, it, it makes it easy when you have so many good guys on the team that I really enjoy being around. And, you know, I know that they know that I have their backs no matter what. And I let them be themselves. And, you know, I just really care about them. You know, I care about their off the field issues, their on the field issues, their classroom issues, and they know that I really do care about them because you can't fake that. If, if you have a coach and you know he's he's kind of faking the level of effort that it takes to be a, a coach that cares, you know, these guys can tell that, that they can spot a phony a mile away, and uh, you know they know that I do care about them, and I would do absolutely anything for them, no matter what it is. And I'm willing to reach out to as many schools and colleges as possible for some of our JUCO guys, and found them all homes, so they all have a four-year spot now. And you know, taking the extra time to reach out to all those schools and talk to them, and you know, get them here at Phil Welsh to watch them play, and you know, it really means a lot to these guys. And you know, it's a nice relationship where I'm willing to do anything for them, and they're willing to do anything for me on the field. And you know, I've had zero zero problems off the field, on the field with any of these guys' attitudes. They want to give everything they have to this Mustangs organization and the fans. And, you know, it's a perfect relationship I have with these guys, and it couldn't be any better. Last question, I'll get you out of here. 6,013 fans. I saw someone make a joke. There's some Major League Baseball games this year that haven't had that many fans in the ballpark. To have 6,000-plus here, just what does that, what did that mean to you to see that? It's, it's incredible. I mean, it just goes to show how much St. Joe loves, you know, the Mustangs. Taylor Swift, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. People are willing to come out and have fun watching a Mustangs baseball game. And, you know, that's only going to – and we played so well that night as well. I mean, we've been playing pretty well at home, you know, the last couple of weeks, but we were really able to play well that night. And, you know, whenever these guys play well in front of big crowds, it makes people just want to keep coming back. And, you know, it was such a fun time. And I talked to a couple parents that their first night was that night because their daughters are Taylor Swift fans. And they're like, man, we've been missing out. This thing's been here for – you know, 13 years and, and we haven't been to one game, what are we doing? And I feel like a lot of people have felt that same way, you know, that any, any night could be someone's first night at a ball game. And Kai does such a great job of making it appealing to everybody, whether you like baseball, whether you like the bounce house, whether you like horses, you know, whatever, we do fun games in between. There's something for everybody every single night. And that's why people keep coming back because it's just so much fun. It's a perfect relationship St. Joe has with the fans and, you know, everything is just, work just fits so well. Johnny, appreciate the time. Good luck the rest of the way. All right, man. Thank you. Welcome back into the St. Joe Mustang Show right here on KQ2, sponsored by Gets Credit Union and Ventura Foods. Chris Roush now being joined by one of the assistant coaches of the Mustangs, Truman Merrick. And Truman, you've been around this program a couple of years now. We talk about it all the time with Johnny, with Kai, with the guys. The high level, the quality of players that Johnny brings in. Your baseball background goes all over the place, just from the Nationals and everything you've done. Just what makes this group high level of guys out there uh, I mean that kind of goes directly to Johnny and his ability to go out with the connections that he has uh, to scout out guys that are the right fit Johnny's ability uh, with the connections that he's made his years doing this uh, throughout the entire nation as far as every school division one division two NAIA JUCO um, he's developed so many relationships that um, he's trusted with sending like very uh, high high-ended players to him um, but also uh, pretty fortunate in the fact that we have a lot of quality and high-ended um, local players as well so um, kind of the combination where you know it's it's like best of both worlds when you have kids that can play at a high level that are local plus Johnny's connections across the nation um, play a huge part now I want to go a little bit deeper into your background so people know your path and everything what has been your path in baseball obviously Bishop LeBlanc wouldn't call, play college baseball but career didn't stop there either um, yeah, I mean, I bounced around. I did a little bit of independent um, strength coaching in some organizations, but 
Um, you know, my journey was was really up and down the, the East Coast, uh, a lot through the Midwest. Um, I've been fortunate to, to be a part of teams that um, have a lot of uh, high skill, high uh, intelligence as far as with the game. But um, I've learned a lot over the years. I've been fortunate to, to be under a lot of, of um, quality managers. So uh, honestly, I was just a sponge wherever I went. Um, I'm still am to this day. So it's, it's, if I can learn anything, I always try to. You mentioned that uh, Johnny obviously able to get players from all over the country, right? You've lived all over the country. You said up and down the East Coast. There's guys all over the country, but Johnny gets them to come to middle Missouri, middle of the country, St. Joe, and they win championships. I mean, they've won eight, going for nine. What draws everybody to St. Joe? I think if you, you know, if you just came to one game, you would get the idea of why it's so special. Um, I mean, the community has taken a hold of, of what's going on here at the stadium, and Kai's doing a phenomenal job. Um, everything kind of comes together with, like, this is such a fun place to play. And the Mink League is still a very competitive league. Um, guys are still sending in quality arms. Um, it's, a, it's just like a – it's a, really the closest thing you can get to playing professional baseball in the sense of your schedule. So um, that combined with the talent that you're playing against, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. How big is that? schedule part of it where that is a grueling schedule where you are playing sometimes 15 days in a row maybe have an off day I think Mustangs had four off days this summer how big is that part about just learning that part of the game too that's that's uh that was one of the toughest things I think for myself to understand um how to manage like playing every day because it's a lot I mean if your offers start piling up um if you have some good games piling up it can go the slide goes both ways pretty pretty quick so it's just it's being able to um, manage the expectations each day, right? Having a routine, uh, being able to uh, uh, control what you can control and have a short memory. Get you out of here on this question. Obviously, Mustangs broke that attendance record of 6,013 fans. And saw a couple of jokes online that was more than some Major League Baseball games this year. We won't mention the team's name. But the fact that 6,000 te- 6, fans packed into Phil Welch, I mean, there's not a lot of things that a lot of people agree on nowadays, but for some reason the Mustangs are that thing where everybody comes together. Just what does that say that 6,013 people packed I mean, in? It's like it's like I said, though. It's it's the place, if you just come to a game and, and experience the atmosphere, it's awesome. Um, I have friends who come to games who talk about how it's just like this family-oriented place where it's stress-free, you can let your kids run around. I mean, it's it's so much fun on both ends of it, whether you're on the field or in the stands. It's just an awesome it's an awesome place to be. Truman, appreciate your time. Thank I'll you. let you go back into coaching. Absolutely. Right? Yes yeah. sir. Yeah, coaching. <laughs> we'll be right back. Mustangs pitcher Tyson Hilsbeck in just his second year with the Mustangs and also heading into his sophomore season of college baseball. Hilsbeck played a huge role on the Mustangs team last year as just a 17, 18 year old kid. Now he's back and ready to do even more for the Mustangs here in the home stretch. I mean, being able to come back just shows you how short, short everything can be. Pitcher Ty Hilzebeck returns to the Mustangs this summer, continuing his success. It's all the guys and being able to play in front of your hometown. It doesn't get better than that. And then the group of guys, I mean, we play almost every single day, and we just never get tired of it. Hilzebeck sitting at 4-1 and one and third in the team with 28 strikeouts and five starts. The eighth strikeout for Tyson Hilzebeck. One of several returning to the club this season, the former Savannah standout enjoying his time. After all, his first year ended with him taking the mound and helping seal the deal as the Mustangs won their third straight Mink League title. I remember how locked in I was, and then when I came out of the game, that was probably the greatest, greatest moment of my baseball career. But an accident this last fall almost ended his entire baseball career. It just shows you how much, how much, how life is so short, and you got to take advantage of every moment that you get. Despite the scary and possible life-altering accident, Hilzebeck able to return to the mound. Getting a really bad car wreck, 
and we were not sure if he was going to make it or not, you know, and um, he's out here healthy now, has a new appreciation for everything he's doing, and, you know, he's throwing really well for us. In fact, he's heading to Des Moines Area CC this next year to play for the Bears. I went and toured there, and uh, I love the facilities and the coaches. I threw a bullpen, and the pitching coach helped me a lot during that time. It just seemed like the best fit for me. But before he goes up there and plays, Hilzebeck has high hopes for the rest of the season, especially with the talent level on this squad. Very talented. We're all very close. And I think that's going to help propel us to hopefully a 4 P. Don't go anywhere. We'll wrap things up here on the Sage of Mustang Show. We come back right here on KQ2. Stay tuned. Let's wrap things up here on the St. Joe Mustangs show, sponsored by Getz Credit Union and Ventura Foods. The Mustangs finishing out the regular season this weekend. Next week, it's all playoffs. Wild card round Monday night, divisional round Tuesday, and then a best of three. The Mustangs get there Thursday, Friday, and if need be, the game next Saturday. We'll have plenty more throughout the week next week on the St. Joe Mustangs, but until then, I'm Chris Roush. We'll see you next time.